Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Ah. I've got some fun, spooky goodness from Tim Holtz today. And I am going to share a card where I started out, I really didn't know where it was gonna go, but I think in the end you will agree or not. I mean, I can't control that. It turned out pretty cool and I'm excited to share this with you because getting messy and staining my hands, not something I would have done before starting card making. Card making has encouraged me to be far more adventurous with crafting than I would have ever been before. My whole mantra is, it's just paper. It's just paper. So take some risks, try some funky things. It might turn out to be a hot mess or could turn out spooky good. My card project featuring Tim's really cool distress mica stains coming up next. So here's the inspiration for today's card project, and that is some of the funky limited edition Distress Mica stains from Tim Holtz and Ranger. Tim kindly sent me a few of these to play with because he, he likes to see me get a little messy. And I also have the Distress Texture Paste. And I thought what would be fun is to grab some of my CZ Design Halloween products. So. I am pulling in an older stencil called Just Batty, and I also have a little CZ Design Trick or Treat. This is just the words Trick or Treat, it cuts separately, and a shadow layer to, well, I don't know which way, there, does it go like that? To hold the letters in place. Oh, and I have a piece of cardstock here. This is the Simon Says Stamp extra heavyweight. I think it's 130 pound. So it's very sturdy. It will hold mediums well. And let's get started with adding our paste. So all I'm going to do here is just, you know, maybe I'll put this at a bit of an angle. Nothing, nothing crazy because I am going to trim this down a little. So I think what I'll do is I'll just I'll put a little tape there uh, so that my stencil doesn't move while I'm adding my medium. I'm going to grab just a piece of cheap copy paper here to put underneath. Go ahead and just tape that down a little more. I like the stencil to not go anywhere. And I'll grab my texture paste. Now this color is called Grave. And again, this is limited edition. Tim is not going to be um, this whole mica stain with the funky, funky colors. It's just a special Halloween release for the holiday. <laughs> and actually, I don't know if I wanna use, you know what, I think I'm gonna use my bigger palette knife because I like to get, I like to get a little more at once. You can kind of see this texture. It's almost like a, it's kind of putty-like. It's very thick. And all I'm gonna do is start potching down so that we get a series of bats on the paper. Okay, and it, it's this kind of cool gray color, but we, <laughs> oh, we're gonna spray it up. We're gonna do some, some wacky things with it. And once I get the first little batch down here, I will come back in and sort of smooth off, just kind of, kind of potching it in like that. Take some of that, just kind of scrape a little of the excess off. I'm just gonna keep working here. Now, as soon as I'm done, I'm going to pause the camera and go pop my stencil and do some nice, warm, soapy water. And I'm scraping off, right, a little excess here. It goes right back into the pot. Just wipe that down. And then I'm going to try something that I saw Tim do, which was kind of fun. And again, I, I learn a lot from watching Tim work and watching his techniques. And even though Tim and I both have very different styles, there's so much you can take from it. And one of the things I saw Tim do was just gently pat his palette knife onto whatever he's stenciling to kind of create, and I'm just doing this very lightly, just a funky texture onto the stenciled elements. Does that make sense? We're just adding a little texture to our bats with a light tap. And again, I don't, I don't really know where this is going, right? It's going somewhere. I'm going to have to let this dry too. So it's going to have to be, I don't know, about 15 minutes. So I'll, I'll take a little break, you know, maybe try to organize some of my craft supplies. Lift off this corner. And of course, anytime you're doing a stencil, you want to go straight up like that. Ooh, look at that. And that will go into the sink, but look at that cool 
bit of texture, right? Just got it a little spookier, just like that. So I'm gonna walk away, let this dry about 15 minutes until I move on to the next step. I might even use this little fan, <laughs> this little fan, and uh, just to hasten it. I don't want heat, right? I just want it to dry nicely. I actually have on order, and it has not arrived yet, one of the Tim Holtz Ranger heated tools because I think it diffuses the heat a little more and I've been wanting to have one in my arsenal. So that is on its way. So this is mostly dry and here's what I'm doing. And I've already played with this a few times. I've got this big old box that I actually get my, got my most recent Olive in June nail polish stuff in, but it's great for uh, doing sprays in because it has a high side and I love that. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to take the bubbling cauldron and shake it up. And then I'm just going to spritz it on just like kind of full strength, right? Like that. Whoa, there we go. And then I'm going to take the hocus pocus. Just kind of let it let it do its thing. Oh. And the last one is the jack-o'-lantern. That. And actually, oh, my jack-o'-lantern was a little, that one's leaking a little in the lid. <laughs> I'm so messy right now, it's crazy. Look at that, Tim, I'm getting stuff on me. One more spritz of green, right there, right there. Are we good on purple? Maybe a little more. I just love this, these colors. I mean, it's a beautiful Halloween, you know, sort of triad. I don't know, maybe I do need a tiny bit more. This is why it's nice to have a full box to do this in because then, you know, this is splattering up on the sides, but it's not coming out at all. Well, let's see what happens if I just dab with paper towel. Ooh, ooh, it's kind of lifting more of the saturated color, right? I think I'll do that on the green too. It's kind of like that. So we're getting kind of the tone on tone bats and let's come down here. Cause there's a lot of the spray collecting in here. And if you just sort of sop it up, I think that is pretty cool looking, right? Okay, I'm gonna walk away and let this dry. I'm just gonna do the same thing here and just sort of, you know, help it along, help the process along. So while this is drying, I wanna think about my greeting. And I'm not sure if I want, I, I pulled this little sort of gray charcoal colored uh, glitter paper. It's from a Simon Says Stamp glitter pack. And I don't know if that would make a good trick or treat or would that make a good shadow layer, right? Because if I, maybe what I could do, I could do this as a shadow layer and then I could do the trick or treat, stack it all and glue it together. And what if I sprayed that with mica spray to get that, or with the mica stain rather, to get sort of a visual connection to the background? I think we might work on that. So next I am gonna grab my spray adhesive, right? And coat the back of these so that I can have two stacks of each with this stuff. All right, I'll do this just off camera because I don't like it to be Sprayed in here, my camera. Like that, are we on? Mostly, let's see. Let go, pull that together. Sometimes it helps to just sort of wiggle it manually because this sticks, right? That's a, that gives you a very firm stick. Do I have a brick? I do have a brick. Let's do that one like that. Then we'll grab the other one. Like that. that looks pretty good. And I could go for a third layer, but I think in the name of simplicity, I'm just going to, oh, let's, let's squeeze that a little bit better. Like that. I think it's going to be fine because I am going to color these with the Distress Mica Stains. And then these little guys, I'm just going to glue. Well, no, I'm going to glue these with liquid glue because they're so tiny. Um, I think to spray them, <laughs> I can't even get the centers out. Come on now. There you go. I think to spray them, they would just blow all over the box, you know, because they're so small. It's tiny. 
So I will glue these together using some Barely Art with a nice precision tip, and then we will change the color. So I brought the box back, and I'm just gonna pop that in, pop that in, O and the R. Now here's a question. I don't, again, I might change my mind. I might change my mind on this, okay? I'm not sure yet about that. But what I don't know is, do I wanna try to incorporate all three colors or maybe just the green? Do you know what I mean? Because the green would really pop on that. Hmm, what do you think? <laughs> just try it. Because this, this could be a hot mess. I'm just changing the color here of Trick or Treat. And honestly too, I might decide that this would look better in black. Do you know what I mean? Or on a black shadow layer. But I think what I'll do is I'll just, you know, I'll just let that sit for a second. Actually, I think I'm gonna try to go a little bit from the sides too, just, you know, kind of, if you're gonna go all in, let's go all in. And again, I die cut this out of the 130 pound cardstock, so it should be able to handle should be able to handle it. Now I'm just gonna let that dry a little. So we'll walk away and wait till you see the shine on this. So my orange finger notwithstanding, I don't know if the if it's gonna catch the shine on here. I And I've got my ore also off camera. Oh my God, I didn't do the green though, the, the tittles. You know what, I might have to do a, I might have to do a gem for the tittle. We'll figure that out. But I actually think, I actually think just going with black is going to be a better look. And I'll show you why. Because look, if you if you put it on the black, you get such a pop. If you put it on the glitter, I don't think that's the same pop, right? If I had black glitter cardstock, now I do not feel adventurous enough to make my own glittered background. I do have, I do have the nightfall glitter, but you know what? This is this is my safe little. Uh, we're gonna do this much today. Although I didn't even think of doing the tittle, so I think I'm gonna have to spray that as well. Oh my gosh, I'd love that. And also, this piece is not completely dry, but the shine on it is like, it's super cool, right? Because you have those mica flakes in there. I mean, look at the, and the texture with the bats. Plus it, it is bendy, right? It doesn't get crunchy and hard. And I think that's cool, but I'm still gonna let this dry completely still cause it's still a little damp. And then I'll go ahead and I will glue on the trick or treat and I'll color the tittle and then I'll come back cause I have one more little idea for creating the finished card. So I'm gonna cut this down a bit. I'm not gonna use one of my waffle flower dies cause they just wanna kind of preserve, you don't wanna preserve the bats. So cut. And what I want this to be, let me see. I want it to be three, three and a half by four and three quarters. So I think I'll take, take a little bit of this off first. Okay. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna go to three and a half and see, I don't think I get enough green there. So let's let's do this, let's do it over a little bit like that. Like that. Okay, there's the four. Flip it again for three and a half. See, this is why I love, I love my dies, my waffle flower dies, but I don't want to alter the dimension. I don't want to press this at all. And then that I'm going to have, let's see, this will be three and a half by four and three quarters. So not much, right? We're going to go down like that and cut. And that is my band with the shine and the mucky muck with the bats with the texture i love it all right we're moving on but there's no doubt in my mind that i'm going to use the same simon black card stock that i used in the shadow layer for the card base because you know it's all about spooky and uh black card base it's going to give me the right level of spooky go ahead and go like that Sometimes when I have a piece of paper that I have been doing a lot of things to, I go a little heavier with the foam tape. So here I just covered the whole back, right? Because that's gonna help keep this nice and flat on the card base. And here's my black card base. Now here's the hard thing. You can see it pretty well on camera because the light's different. But in, the, in here in the craft slash dining room, it's really hard for me to see the top and bottom. But let me see here if I can do this. I love that framing margin space. 
and commit. Oh, that's pretty good. I think I may have cut it a little bit uh, short, but you know what? I think that's okay. I still think this is great. So here I've got some thin foam squares on the back as well, because we're going to have the trick-or-treat at an angle. Now here's the question. Should I use, pull out my Halloween sentiment strips from the past Halloween season, uh, trick-or-treat team Edward. <laughs> uh, if you eat if, if you eat peanuts and candy corn, you're totally my people. That is so true. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween would be cute on there, right? Spook, there it is. I mean, just makes me think of the commercial with the, is it the Geico commercial where the dudes are singing Rocky Road, Cherry? I think Spook, there it is, could be cute. I want something short there. Mm, oh, I don't know. I'm really torn. Trick or treat, Team Edward. I think I'm just going to go with Happy Halloween. So let me grab my sentiment label dies and I'm going to go ahead. Let's see here. I'll go ahead and cut out Happy Halloween and it'll look just, and then all these pieces stay. Although I'm really torn. Is Spook there? It is cute because you know, whoop, whoop. What is, what is this? I can't think of the song right now. But that could be called, that could be cute too. All right. I'm going to go with Happy Halloween. And of course, the trick that I always like to do is I like to take the Copic T10 marker at the brush side. Yeah. Whenever I have my sentiment strips, because they are printed on white core cardstock, right? It's black ink over, and the type is just, there's no color there. That's called a reverse, which is why we call them reverse, whatever the name of this, the set is. And I just lightly drag over the edge of each side that's exposed, just lightly, to coat it all like that. So now it has the illusion of being on black cardstock. I put a little uh, Darice strip here because I think what I want to do is I want to have Happy Halloween kind of... Well, you know what? Maybe the Darice strip isn't in the right place. Well, Hmm, let's see. I might have to take some of that off because I kind of want it to be coming down a little more over that swoop de doo over the little D center of the T. So let's figure out the placement. I definitely want this at an angle. I definitely want to make sure we are centering in an appropriate location, right? Because yeah, you could have you could have that be flush right with the right like that. I just took thin foam squares from 3L scrapbook adhesives. They're kind of my favorite because the depth is so nice. It's not, I mean, once you start popping up your card base and then you start popping up your greeting, your dimension can build up fast. And you know, sometimes when you're shipping those cards in the mail, well, it can get a little mucky muck, but um, I like the thin foam squares and I like to buy the combo packs that have the small ones and the large ones. I'm not going to do liquid adhesive on this because I feel like I feel pretty confident that I can place this in the right place. Right there, side to side, nice little angle. Yeah, pop that down like that. Take the backer off of this strip and just kind of go right over that little swoop down like that. I think Right? Like that. And that is the finished card. Now, the shine on this, like I'm going to try to get the different angles of the mica, of the, the mica stain, because it is just so glisteny. You also have all that texture from the baths, but look at the way the, that texture paste kind of claims the color. Isn't that cool? And just kind of the messiness of it all. But the shine, oh, and the fact that the trick-or-treat also matches. I don't know. I'm going to have to tag Tim Holtz. I think he's going to be very proud of me for this card project today. So hope this inspires you to check out some of Tim's new Distress Mica Stains, his new uh, texture paste. There's also some glitters and some other pastes in there. And, of course, there's three other colors. I just, I have all of them. And I just chose the three that I wanted for my little Halloween triadic scheme. But yeah, check them out. I'll have all the supplies linked below the video. And I will see you back here with another card project soon. 
Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.